Hello there, welcome to Your Money, Their Hands, and this week we're looking at gold. Of course, there are a number of different ways you can invest in the precious metal. There's the actual gold bullion, although you'll need to save storage space, I recommend. There's exchange-traded funds, or alternatively, you can invest directly in the companies who mine it. Or rather, play a little safer and choose a mutual fund that covers a number of the miners in one portfolio. But before then, you should consider the investment climate. From $253 an ounce in 1999, it's recently been over $1,000 an ounce. I'm joined by Ambrose Evans, Pritchard, the Telegraph's international business editor. Ambrose, gold's often seen as a sort of safe investment storage place for value. Is that still the case? It has had an incredible run. And it, it went up from about the first three or four or five years, it went up with oil and base metals, industrial metals. And then more recently, it's decoupled and it's reclaimed its old role as a kind of safe haven currency. It's gone up against everything, against the dollar, against the euro, against the Japanese yen. It's just exploded. And it, it's found some new role, which I think is very significant. And I think, I think what investors are looking at is that they're, they're worried about the fragility of the world banking system. Uh, and they're also worried that the solutions to this could set off another round of hyperinflation down the road. And there are enough people who are afraid of this for there to be a huge investment flow into gold. And this is individuals as, as opposed to sort of big companies or investment banks or even central banks. The, the, the latest phase of this has been a huge amount going into these small um, ETFs, exchange traded funds, ordinary people who, who can't easily buy a bar of gold or store it. Who are, who are using these funds as a way of putting a small amount of money in, maybe on a monthly basis. And it's quite extraordinary how much they've been accumulating. S some of these funds now hold more than quite large central banks. That's extraordinary, isn't it? And I mean, does this tell us then, is this is, is a good indicator of how people see, including professionals, the near-term future of the global economy? It, I think it reflects a high degree of fear, both from quite rich investors who are buying literally crates of gold, keep in their, in their houses, and small investors who just want some safe place to put their money. Now, whether they're right is another matter. You know, you get manias at the end of a, of a, of a speculative run. The big question right now is, is this, is this the beginning of a much bigger mania, or, or are we near the end of this run? Where do you stand? I'm neutral. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fairly safe place to be, um, Emrys. But I'm, I'm, I'm watching. It, it, it seems Are you surprised though? It, it, how look, well look, it's held look, this look. value? No, because I, I thought it would go soaring up. I, I'm a little suspicious of the market right now because it looks a little toppy for all kinds of reasons. But I don't think we've seen the end of this global financial crisis and this deeper global economic crisis. And I think the policy responses to this are going to be are going to be things we've never seen before and that will benefit gold. I think there will have to be some form of an inflationary solution because the amount of debt that's been built up in the global economy is so huge you can't let debt deflation run its course. It'll do too much damage. So I think there, there will be pressure on, on the authorities everywhere to respond with some form of inflation. And I hate that. And I was against this debt build-up. But I just think it's inevitable. And so I think the gold will tend to perform pretty well in that environment. Ambrose, thanks very much indeed. And that was Ambrose Evans Pritchard, the Telegraph's international business editor and a noted gold watcher. And of course, you can read all of Ambrose's articles online and in the paper. And that's it for this week. But thanks for watching and don't forget to keep up to date with all the latest personal finance news online and at the weekend. Join us again next time for more top tips.